We're going to prove this statement that a convergent sequence is bounded. Let's assume that we have some convergent sequence here. So let's let, I'll call it a sub n. This is our sequence b convergent. And, and let's say it converges to its limit l. l will be the limit of this. What does that mean? What's the definition of a sub n converging to l? Well, this means for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some capital N in the natural numbers such that for all little n greater than this n, the absolute value of our sequence minus its limit is less than epsilon. And so this is true for any epsilon we want. For convenience sake, let's just let this epsilon be one. It's true for any epsilon, so in particular, it's true for one. And so here's the trick. We're gonna try to bound this. We're trying to bound a sub n. And I'm gonna just say that we have one bound. I'll call it b1. We're gonna call b1 the absolute value of l, the absolute value of the limit, plus one. This is the trick here. And then what do we have? For all little n greater than n, I know this statement above is true, but let's do this. Let's take our sequence, remember we're trying to show that our sequence is bounded so that in absolute value it's less than some number. We're gonna do the usual trick. We're gonna add by zero here. If I subtract L and I add L, right, that's just adding by zero, we're allowed to do that. And then we do the usual thing here, which is apply the triangle inequality. We'll apply the triangle inequality like this. This has to be less than or equal to the absolute value of a sub n minus L plus the absolute value of L. That's just the triangle inequality. Now we know this part, we said that that's less than epsilon, which we're calling one. So this has to be less than one and we still have that absolute value of L. Hey, maybe you can see what's happening here. One plus L in absolute value, that's the same as L in absolute value plus one. This is B1. So what have we really shown here? We've shown that our sequence in absolute value is less than b1. I don't know what b1 is, it's some number, some number one more than our limit in absolute value. And we kind of have half the question here. This was only true for every n after capital N. But what about all of the values of the sequence before little n? Well, there's only a finite number of them. What are they? Well, if we're assuming our sequence starts at one, I, I don't know, maybe we want our sequence to start at zero, but a1, a2, a3, we could just list them. There's only a finite number of them all the way up to capital N. There's only a finite number here. And so let's just pick another number, b2, and we'll let it be the max, the largest one of these. Well, since our set up to capital N is finite, has a finite number of terms, it's necessarily bounded. In fact, it's bounded by B2. So let's just let capital B, and this will be our bound, let's just let B be the max of both of these, the max of B1 and the max of B2. So B is the bigger bound here. If B1 is the bound of the later terms and B2 is the bound of the up to n terms, then b is the larger of the two and it bounds both of them. And so we've bounded the first n terms and we've bounded all the terms after that, hence the sequence must be bounded overall, which is what we wanted to show. And so the statement really is here for all little n in the natural numbers, we have our sequence a sub n is less than, I guess I'll say less than or equal to B. That's what it means for it to be bounded. We've just shown a convergent sequence is bounded. Now go ahead and click the next video on the screen to keep watching the real analysis course.